Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome. In the previous session, uh, we had looked into simple linear regression, wherein we were given a data, wherein we were given a set of data points, right? Uh, let's say x1, y1, x2, y2, all the way up to x and y1, and we saw how to fit a uh, how to fit a model y is equal to a0 plus a1x. So our objective was to find out the values of a0 and a1 such that the model best represents the data point. That's what we had looked into it that is going to form the basis of this session right the outline of this session is going to be in under linear regression we are going to discuss multiple linear regression and polynomial regression so in multiple linear regression we are essentially trying to fit a model y is equal to a0 plus a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x3 and so on let's say till am xm right where x1 x2 x3 are the uh, independent variable. So, the data points are given like this uh, x1, x2, x3 and for this so let us say this is 2, 8, 9 the y value is given the dependent variable value let us say 15. So, like this we are given n points right. So, our task is to fit a model uh, y is equal to a0 plus a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x3. We can either fit this type of model right wherein we have a constant coefficient so we'll discuss that first or our model can also be y is equal to a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x3 so here if we see we don't have a constant coefficient so we'll also uh, discuss that case right so that's what we are going to do in multiple linear uh, regression in uh, coming to polynomial regression in polynomial regression uh, we uh, we are required to fit a model y is equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a3x cube right uh, so in this case the data that is given to us is the independent variable x and y let us say 2 8 5 3 like this we have been given n points so our task is to find out the values of a0 a1 a2 a3 such that this model best represents this data points right so that is going to be polynomial regression again in polynomial regression we can do it with constant coefficient or without constant coefficient uh, depending upon uh, the need uh, we can either have a constant coefficient or not uh, or the constant coefficient may not be there in the model so uh, that would be an extension of uh, the discussion that we would have till that point of time so that can be easily uh, handled Right. So, in this case what we will be essentially doing in polynomial regression is uh, we will be converting it into a multi uh, linear regression. Right. So, uh, y is equal to it is going to be let us say if we have the constant coefficient a0 then we are going to say plus a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x3 where x1 is nothing but the data point x which is given to us x2 is the data point each data point squared so x square and x3 is going to be x cube right so once we do this transformation right this is nothing but the multiple linear regression which we'll be do discussing in the first half of the session right so polynomial regression is essentially being converted into multiple linear uh, regression after that we'll be looking into uh, general linear least square model so this is this was for simple linear uh, regression when we do multiple linear regression and a po polynomial regression there will be lot uh, you, uh, when we do this multiple linear regression or polynomial regression this coefficient matrix is going to contain lot of terms which need to be evaluated right so either we can 
uh, stick to that process or we can adopt this general linear least square method wherein from the data points we will be able to directly get this uh, A matrix, right? the coefficient matrix and the right hand side uh, can be easily obtained if we know general linear least square method. So under general linear least square method, we will be uh, discussing uh, multiple linear regression with constant coefficient and also multiple linear regression without constant coefficient. So that is going to be uh, the focus of this session. So in this case, whatever we had considered so far, we had only one independent variable, right? One dependent variable and one independent variable. So in multiple, re multiple linear regression, we will have more than one uh, independent variable the dependent variable is still 1, right? So we are talking about models like y is equal to a0 plus a1x1 plus a2x2 plus a3x3 and so on. So now let us look into multiple linear regression, right? So in multi multiple linear regression, uh, these two are uh, independent variables x1 and x2, right? So for example, uh, that can be temperature and pressure. So these uh, x1 and x2 are uh, independent variables. Right, and y is a dependent variable. In this case, the model that we uh, want to fit is, uh, the model is A0 plus A1, X1 plus A2, X2. So this is Y model, right? So there, uh, uh, depending upon how accurately this data was measured, there may or may not be an error associated with each data point, right? So our model is A0 plus A1, X1 plus A2, X2. And our task is to find out the values of A0, A1 and A2. Right. So this is uh, equation involving two independent variables. So we can have an equation involving m independent variables. So for example, we can have y is equal to a0 plus a1x1 plus a2x2 all the way up to amxm. Right? And uh, since this is the measured value and this is our model, uh, the error vector would be there. Right? So this can be compactly written as a0 plus summation i is equal to 1 to m ai xi. So that will capture this part completely, right? except for the a0 which we have separated out and then plus e. So this is known as multiple linear regression and it has m independent variables. So first we will look into this case. Once we are comfortable with this case, this is merely an extension uh, of, uh, this can be extended to this one. right? So even in this case we need to um, define, uh, we need to set a criteria Right. So the criteria is again going to be uh, the sum of square of errors. Right. So this is the model value, this is the observed value, so this is the error, right? error associated with the ith point. So we are going to square it and then we are going to sum it up. Right. So SR indicates the sum of square of the residuals or the sum of square of errors. So for this again we need to uh, apply the stationary condition. So here we have three unknowns A0, A1, A2. Remember X1 i and x2i are known, right? so those data points are known. So we need to differentiate this uh, with respect to a0, a1 and a2. Right? So when we differentiate this with respect to a0, right? so it is 2 times this expression, right? 2 times the so same thing x square differentiation of x square is 2x dx right? and then the differentiation of a0 with respect to a0 will give us 1 but since we have this minus sign over here, we will get minus 1 that is why this minus is over here. Now if we uh, expand this, this is minus summation of yi plus a0 because of this minus and this minus this will become plus. Similarly plus a1 x1i summation plus summation of a2 x2i. Right? So since a0, um, so the summation of a0 is uh, n a0 and then a1 and a2 can be moved out of the summation and since yi is known, the data is known. So summation yi can be calculated, so we take it to the right hand side. So this will be a constant term, it does not have any uh, coefficient associated with it, so we take it to the right hand side similar to what we did earlier. Right? So now this is a equation, linear equation, Right? This, this term is known, summation x1i is known, n is known and summation x2i is known. Right? So this equation if we see, it is a linear equation uh, in a0, a1 and a2, those values are not known. So similarly we need to do do sr by do a1. So whatever equation we have derived is given over here, right? So let us calculate do sr by do a1 equal to 0, right? So uh, we apply this stationary point condition, right? So in this case again uh, 
2 times this value, so this 2 and this should be evident and then we need to differentiate with respect to a0, right? So, differentiation of yi will turn will be 0, differentiation with respect to a0 would be 0, differentiation with a2 will be 0. So, differentiation with respect to a1 will give us the coefficient minus x1i. So, that is why we have this uh, x1i and this minus over here, right? Similarly, 2 can be eliminated because the right hand side is 0 and then we expand this, right? So, here we have minus summation of y, yi x1i plus a0 x1i plus a1 x1i square because this is x1i and this is also x1i, right? So, square plus summation of a2 x2i, a2 x2i and x, x1i, right? So, in this equation if we see, uh, since x1 is completely known and y is completely known, this term can be calculated, right? And it does not involve any coefficient. So, this can be taken to the right hand side. So, that is why we, that is what we have here. And similarly, a0 can be taken outside over here, summation of x1i plus a1 which is a con which is unknown, a1 summation of x1i the whole square plus a2 summation of x1i x2i. So, this, uh, this equation is again a linear equation in a0, a1, a2 and a0, a1, a2 are unknown. So, that is our second equation. Similarly, we can uh, do dou sr by dou a2 equal to 0, right? I leave the, uh, cal, uh, I leave the uh, differentiation to you, right? So, here also we will get uh, equation uh, which involves a0, a1, a2, they are linear. Uh, the right hand side is summation of yi x2 i, right? And all these coefficients can be calculated. Since x1, x2 is known, uh, these things can be cal calculated, right? So, now we have three equations in three unknowns. The unknowns are a0, a1, a2. All the other terms can be uh, determined from the data itself, right? So, these three equations, since they are linear equations, we can put them in the conventional form, right? So, the first equation n is known. So, it comes into the coefficient matrix, right? This is our coefficient matrix. This is the x vector and this is going to be the right hand side vector. So, ax equal to b. So, the coefficient of x1 is sigma x1 this one. The coefficient of a2 is sigma x2i, so that is over here, right? So, a0, a1, a2 and the right hand side is summation of yi, so that is over here. So, similarly, the other two equations we can write. The coefficient of a0 is this, coefficient of a1 is this, coefficient of a2 is this. So, those things will go into the coefficient matrix and similarly, the third equation, uh, these three values can go into the coefficient uh, matrix and this right hand side is given over here, right? So, just like in the last, uh, in linear regression, we had a non-linear, uh, we had a non-linear optimization problem, right? Uh, because it involved the square term in the objective function. That when we applied stationary condition, last time we got two equations in two unknowns. In this case, multilinear regression, we did the same thing. We applied the stationary condition. Uh, when we apply the stationary condition, since there are three unknowns, a0, a1, a2, we get three equations in three unknowns. All the equations are linear, which can again be put in the standard format ax equal to b. So, uh, this part shows what we have discussed so far, right? So, we had this, this was our model. This is the measured value. This is the error. Our objective function was sr is equal to sum of square of error. So, this was ei. So, square and then summation, right? And then we applied the three stationary conditions, dou sr by dou a0 equal to 0, dou sr by dou a1 is equal to 0 uh, and dou sr by dou a2 equal to 0 and we uh, got these three equations, three linear equations in three unknowns which can be put in this conventional form ax equal to b. Let us assume that if there were more independent variables, instead of two independent variables, if there had been m independent variables, right? Let us say this was our model a0 plus a1 x1i plus a2 x2i plus uh, all the other terms till am xm, uh, am xmi plus an error. Remember, this is the model, right? This is the observed data point or the measured data point. So, there may be some mismatch between what we have observed and what our model is capturing. So, we have this error. 
So again this is the explain uh, this is the same as sum of square of errors. This is the model, the model part, this is the measured value. So the error with respect to each data point squaring it up and summing it up. So this is our SR. So over here if we are to apply stationary condition, we need to do do SR by do A0 equal to 0, do SR by do A1 equal to 0, do SR by do A2 is equal to 0, all the way up to do SR by do AM equal to 0. Right? So if we uh, do that, so for example if we uh, do with respect to uh, A0, so this is do SR by do A0 equal to 0, this equation corresponds to that. So it will be A0 into n plus A1 summation of x1 i plus a2 summation of x2 i all the way up to am summation of xm i equal to sigma y i. So you can see the analogy between this equation and this equation, right. So this equation it said like the first term is a, uh, n into a0, the second term is summation of the first independent variable, the second one is summation of the second independent variable and the right hand side is summation of uh, the dependent variable. So over here also the right hand side is summation of the dependent variable n into a0 is the same right and uh, this summation of the all these summations are the sum of individual uh, independent variable and multiplied by their corresponding coefficient right. So similarly you can do do sr by do a1 equal to 0, do sr by do a2 is equal to 0 and you will be able to get uh, these two expressions and you can do all the way up to do sr by do am equal to 0. Right. So in this case you will get A0 summation of xmi plus A1 summation of x1i xmi plus A2 summation of x2i xmi plus uh, I mean the other terms plus AM summation of xmi the whole square is equal to summation of yi xmi. Right. So this equation uh, again the set of equations, so here we will have m equations, right. So here, uh, uh, here we had three terms, three unknowns a0, a1, a2, right. So here we will get three coefficients, here we have m plus 1 coefficients, right. Uh, m plus 1 because we are starting with a0, right, a1 to am are m coefficients and then we have this a0, so we will have m plus 1 coefficients. So here also we will have m plus 1 equations. So just like we formed this uh, matrix, just like we put this normal equations, right, into this matrix form, these normal equations can also be put into this matrix form. So now if you see there is actually a uh, symmetry over here, right. So if we know how to do for two independent variables, we can do it for m independent variables, right. So now let us look at an example. So in this case we have been given six data points, right, we have been given x1 and x2. So x1 is one dependent variable, uh, x1 is one independent variable, x2 is the other independent variable and y is the dependent variable. So these values are given and we have established this. Now our task is to find out these individual values and then we need to solve it, right. So in this case uh, n is 6. So summation of x1 is 4, summation of x2 is 18, uh, summation of y is 104, summation of x1 square. Remember again it is not uh, 4 square, right, uh, it is each element has to be squared and then their sum has to be taken, right. So it is 6, summation of uh, x1 i, x2 i is x1 into x2, 0 into 0, 0 into 2. 1 into 2, 2 into 4, 0 into 4, 1 into 6, right. And then we need to sum it up, right. So the 16 will go in these two places. And then we have uh, this yi x1i. So that is 14 into 0 is 0, 21 into 0 is 0, 11 into 1, 11, 12 into 24, 12 into 2, 24. And similarly you can calculate. So that summation happens to be 58. And then we will require x2 square over here. So each element of x2 has to be squared. So we have 6 over here. So 6 square is 36 and then we need to sum this. Remember again it is not 18 square. We need to sum this, this vector, right. So that is 76. Similarly we will have to calculate x2 into y. So in that case it is 14 into 0, so 0, 21 into 2, 42 and similarly we can calculate the other values and that summation would be 342. And so now we have all the values, if we plug them, uh, this is, these are our 
three equations in three unknowns, three linear equations in three unknowns. So, if we solve this, we get these coefficients a0 is equal to 14.02, a1 is equal to minus 6.44 and a2 is equal to 2.53. So, our model is y is equal to a0, so 14.02 uh, plus uh, a1 which is minus 6.44 x1 plus a2 x2 is 2.53 into x2, right. So, given any other value, so for example, if we say at x1 is equal to 3.2 and x2 is equal to let us say 4.8, right. We do not know the value of y from this data set, right. But if we can plug these values 3.2 and 4.8 into x1, x2 and we will be able to calculate y. So, that is the benefit of having a uh, model. Now that we have calculated the model, right, we can also use the same concept uh, coefficient of determination which we discussed earlier for multiple linear regression, right. It is valid over here also. Right? So, these three definitions we already know, right. We know the model over here, uh, the model coefficients over here and the model is given over here. So, now from the model, from these value, we can calculate these values. So, for example, this 24.14 uh, is y is equal to a0 is 14.02 plus a1 is minus 6.44 into x1, x1 in this case happens to be 1 plus uh, a2 that is 2.53 into x2, so x2 is 6. So, if we calculate these values, we will get 22.76. So, for 24.14, we should have used x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 4 in this equation and we would have uh, obtained y model, right. So, for determining this y model, we will not require this y, right. So, this is the value predicted by the model, right. So, the error we can find out, right. So, the mean of uh, y in this case uh, is 17.33. So, y minus y mean. So, again 14 minus 17.33, the whole square will be 11.09, 21 minus 17.33, the whole square is 13.47 and this can be calculated. And then if we sum this, this is nothing but the definition of ST. Similarly, we can calculate uh, model, right. So, here since we are showing you only two decimal, you do not see a value over here, but there is a difference over here, right, 14 minus 14.02, the whole square. 21 minus 19.08 the whole square and similarly, right. So, this happens to be 8.29. So, here itself we can say if we had considered the uh, model to be nothing but the mean, this is the error and over here if we consider the model with these coefficients, then this is the uh, residual error. So, we can calculate uh, S squ uh, R square over here. So, if we plug in these values, ST value, SR values in this, we get a R square of 0.95. So far, uh, what we considered is like so multiple linear multiple linear regression. If we are to summarize, we started with two independent variables, then we extended it for m independent variables, right? In both the cases, we had constant a naught, right? If the first time we had a naught plus a one x one plus a two x two. The second time we had a naught plus a one x one plus a two x two plus a three x three all the way up to a m x m. And then we looked into an example uh, as to how to exactly calculate. Uh, the coefficient values and the coefficient of determination, right. Now, we will see like what if the model did not have a constant coefficient. So, mo model is not y is equal to a0 plus a1 x1 plus a2 x2, but my model is y is equal to a1 x1 plus a2 x2, right. So, let us look into that. Right? So, this is uh, what we have previously derived, right. So, this was our model, this is our model. Right. This is what is the measured value. So, the error is E and then we said uh, y minus the model, right, uh, that is error, right, uh, with respect to the ith point, square it up and sum it up. So, that is nothing but sum of square of residuals and we had this m plus 1 equations uh, due to the stationary condition. There were, there are m plus 1 unknowns. We applied uh, the stationary conditions and determined this m plus 1 equations, right. And then we just plug uh, and then just we put it in the conventional uh, format a x equal to b because all these equations are 
uh, linear right. So, this is the coefficient matrix given a data set this can be completely determined uh, this can be completely determined. So, the only uh, unknown is this x or this uh, coefficients of the model. So, that can be calculated uh, uh, if we know how to solve linear equations right. So, now the case is what happens if there is a no constant. So, if there is no constant let us say if the model does not have this a naught right everything remains the same right. So, this a naught is not there. So, now we have uh, so the definition of uh, SR is still the same right y i minus the model without a naught right. So, this a naught is what is not here. So, without constant coefficient right. So, y minus uh, this model right y i minus the value obtained from the model uh, e i square it up and sum it for all the n data points right. So, that is the same same thing. Right. In this case now we need to differentiate only m times do s r by do a 1, do s r by do a 2, do s r by do a 3 all the way up to do s r by do a m and equate it to 0. Right. There is no do s r by do a naught right this cannot be determined because the model does not have uh, a naught right. So, now we have m equations right. So, similarly if you put them in the conventional format all these equations would be linear nothing changes right all these equation are linear with respect to a 1, a 2 and the coefficient model coefficients all the way up to a m. So, this is again in that format a x equal to b right. So, here we had m plus 1 equation here we will have m linear equation here it was m plus 1 linear equation here it is m linear equation right. So, here if we see it is nothing but whatever we derived for the constant coefficient except for this row and for this column right. So, all the other terms would be uh, the same uh, right. Um, so, that is how we can still work with without constant coefficient right. If the model does not have a constant coefficient uh, still we can apply the same concepts which we have discussed so far uh, to fit uh, those kinds of model. So, that was multiple linear regression. Right. Now, we will move on to polynomial regression where we still have only one uh, wherein we have one independent variable and one dependent variable, but the model is polynomial with respect to the independent variable. Right. So, for example, if the data set is like this uh, we might choose to fit a, a polynomial model let us say a cubic polynomial model rather than a straight line. Right. So, remember in regression you need to know the data points right, and you need to know the model. Right. If you do not know the model uh, there is uh, you cannot uh, even apply regression. So, the nature of the model should be known right only the coefficients are unknown. So, for example, if you give some data points and ask a model to be fit to it the first question is what is the type of model right whether you want a linear model or a nonlinear model. So, that has to be first uh, fixed only when you fix the model can we attempt to determine the coefficients of the model. So, regression requires the data points as well as a model. Now, if you do not know the model you might choose to fit two or three different models and see whichever model best represents your data you might choose to uh, take that as the final model, but to apply regression you require a model right. So, this is uh, the model right. So, a naught plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square all the way it can go up to a m uh, a m x power m. So, here also there are m plus 1 unknowns right this is the measured value or the observed value this is what is from the model right. So, there could be a difference between the measured value and the model. So, that is the error right. So, this is the uh, compactly it can be written like this right a naught plus sigma j is equal to 1 to m because there are this m terms a j x power j plus the error right. Uh, so, this is the generic polynomial regression. Right, but first we will work with y model is equal to uh, a naught plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square. Similar to uh, regression multiple regression wherein we started with just x 1 and x 2 and then extended to x m. We will do the same thing over here that we will start with uh, just uh, a naught a 1 and a 2 and then we will extend it all the way up to a m right. So, by now you should be familiar with this right. So, this is y i is the observed value uh, this is what we get from the model right. Uh, the minus sign is because uh, y i minus y model 
right. So, all this positive uh, over here, uh, all this positives over here would become negative, right. So, the error is mod, uh, the observed data point minus model the whole square, right. So, the error square. So, what we are going to do is the same thing that we are going to minimize the sum of square of errors i is equal to 1 to n uh, e i square, right. So, error in this case is uh, y i minus this model, right. So, uh, for the sake of completeness we will do it, uh, but otherwise you should be uh, able to uh, do it by yourself, right. So, it is just that now we need to again apply the stationary points, right. Do s r by do a naught equal to 0, do s r by do a 1 is equal to 0 and do s r by do a 2 is equal to 0, right. So, do s r by do a 1 equal to 0, the same thing 2 times uh, this x, so x square 2 times uh, this expression, right. And when we differentiate a naught minus a naught with respect to a naught, we get a minus sign. So, that is why this minus sign is over here. So, that has to be equated to 0. And then again do the usual rearrangement. Uh, here we again have the term sigma y i, right, which is completely known that can be taken to the right hand side. Uh, otherwise, these a naught, a 1, a 2 are unknown, right, all the other terms are known. N is the total number of data points, right. So, similarly, we need to calculate do s r by do a 1 is equal to 0. So, 2 times uh, this entire expression. So, differentiation of y i with respect to a 1 would be 0, a naught would be 0. Over here, we will get a minus x i, right. So, that minus can be written over here. So, minus 2 times x i this expression and then x i can be multiplied and this term if you see it can be taken to the right hand side because it is completely known. Again this term, this term and this term are uh, uh, known because the data points are known. So, we can calculate it. The only three unknowns are a naught, a 1 and a 2, right. So, uh, that this is the second equation. And the third equation is do s r by do a 2 is equal to 0. Again the same concept we need to apply, right. So, x i square since it is differentiation with respect to a 2, this x i square is a constant and because of this minus sign, this minus sign appears over here, right. Mm. And then over here this term would be completely uh, known because you have x and y, right. So, you can calculate x square y. So, square each element of x, multiply it with y and then sum it up over here, right. So, this term is known. So, that can be taken to the right hand side. Otherwise, again a naught, a 1, a 2 are the unknowns, a naught, a 1, a 2 are the unknowns and these coefficients can be determined. Right? So, these are the three normal equations in this case, right. Again, they can be put into conventional a x equal to uh, b form, right. So, these three things are completely known. So, that will form our b vector and this n sigma x i sigma x i square uh, are known, all these terms are known. So, they would come in the coefficient matrix, right. So, if we know how to solve this, then we can know uh, given data points, if we know how to solve this, we can find out a naught, a 1, a 2, right. So, in all the three cases, right, in linear regression, multiple linear regression and polynomial regression, if you see the coefficient matrix. Uh, it would be uh, symmetric, right. So, sigma x i, sigma x i, sigma x i square, sigma x i square, sigma x i cube, sigma x i uh, cube, right. So, this is the diagonal. So, it will be symmetric. This matrix will also be positive definite. And there are uh, better methods to solve this a x equal to b, uh, efficient methods to solve this uh, a x equal to b. So, what we currently saw was uh, a naught plus a 1 x i plus a 2 x i square. So, we restricted to only um, the quadratic term, right. So, this is nothing but the error square, sum of square of errors and these were the three equations uh, we obtained because there are three uh, coefficients which we do not know a naught, a 1, a 2. So, these were our normal equations, right and that can be put in this a x equal to b form and this a is again positive symmetric def uh, positive definite, right. So, what if uh, we did not, what if we had more uh, terms, right. So, let us say a 1 x 1 plus a 2 a, so for example, if we had y is equal to uh, a naught plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square plus a 3 x cube all the way up to a m x m, right. So, this is model 
right. So, if this is the observed value, then we also have the error. So, what if our model is uh, this one? So, conceptually everything remains the same, it is just the math that we will have to uh, do, right. So, in this case it is y minus y model, right. So, that is the error, error square. So, again we need to minimize this. To minimize this, we need to apply the stationary conditions, right. So, the stationary conditions, uh, here again it would be m plus 1 equations. Right, because remember we have m constant coefficients from 1 to m and then we also have this a0. Right? So, right now we are not talking about without constant coefficient, we are only talking about uh, higher order polynomial terms being present in the model. So, we will have we can derive this m plus 1 equations. Right? So, it is the same thing do sr by uh, do a0 equal to 0, do sr by do a1 equal to 0 do s r by do a 2 equal to 0 all the way up to do s r by do m equal to 0. So, these are our this will be our m plus 1 normal equation again they can be put in the standard a x equal to b form because all this m plus 1 equations are linear. So, now let us look at an now let us look at an example for polynomial regression right. So, these are our data points we have 6 data points right and this 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 is our these are our three normal equations so the model involves only till the square term y y is equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x square so the number of data points is 6 summation of x is required which is 15 summation of x square is required uh, again it is not 15 into 15 right it is each element has to be squared and then it has to be summed up so that will be required in these three places we require summation of y which is 152.6, then we will require uh, summation of x cube, uh, we need to calculate this and the summation of it is uh, 225 and then we will require y into x. So, y into x is again not 15 into 152.6, right? it is 0 into 2.1, 1 into 7.7, 2 into 13.6, 3 into 27.2 and then this has to be summed up. Right. So, that comes out to be 585.6 x power 4 again this to the power 4 and this summation happens to be 979 which will be required over here. Right. Then we need to require x square. So, x square is over here, y is over here. So, 0 into 2.10, 7.7 .7 into 1, 7.7, 136.4, 54.4, 27.2 into 9, 244.8 and then we need to sum this vector. So, that will be 2488.8. So, if we plug in those values and solve for this 3 equations in 3 unknowns, we will get uh, 2.48, 2.36 and 1.86. So, our model is y is equal to uh, 2.48 plus 2.36 x plus 1.86 x square right for x is equal to 3.5 we do not have the value of y so but that can be plugged over here x is equal to 3.5 can be plugged into this expression and we can find out what is the value of y right and if we are interested we can also find out dy by dx so that will change that will tell us the behavior of y with respect to change in x and we can also calculate d square y by dx square and if there are any inferences so for example this x and y is going to be some uh, physical variable right so this can give additional insights so once we have this model uh, we can calculate all uh, we can calculate uh, these values dy by dx and d square y by dx square so the coefficient of determination is the same concept right so we have this uh, observed value we know the model value uh, right uh, we can calculate the model value because we know the constant coefficient right so, for example, this uh, 26.30 is going to be 2.48 plus 2.36 into 3 plus 1.86 into 3 square uh, because of this uh, model, right. So, that will be 26.30. So, that is how we calculate y model and then we know uh, the mean of y can be calculated which is 25.43. So, this terms can be calculated y minus y mean the whole square can be calculated. So, that works out to be 2513.39. Similarly, y minus y model, right? y minus y model is 
so for example 13.6 minus 14.64 the whole square would be 1.08 and the summation would be 3.74. From here itself we can see that uh, ST minus SR is significant, right. So, we have, uh, so the model coefficients which we determined are actually better uh, than considering the mean itself as model. So, uh, R square in this case should turn out to be very good, right. So, if we plug in these values in this expression ST minus SR by ST, we get an R square as 0 0.99, right. So, we have these data points, right, and now we have this coefficient. So, between 0 and 5, uh, we can generate let us say 1000, 2000 points, and then we can plug in the model because the model is fully known. Once A0, A1, A2 is known, uh, if we plug various values of x, we get various values of y. With respect to that, we can actually plot the entire model in this range, right. So, given any value of x uh, between 0 and 5 we will be able to uh, predict the value of y. So, that is the use of regression. So, to consolidate whatever we have seen so far, right, what we have, what we need to do is define the objective function, right. In this case, the objective function was uh, sum of square of errors, right, or sum of square of residuals, which is nothing but, uh, the error or residual is nothing but the difference between the observed value and what the model would predict, right. So, that has to be minimized. So, in order to minimize that, we apply the stationary condition. So, in linear regression, uh, in simple linear regression wherein there were only two coefficients, A0 and A1, because the model was A0 plus A1x, we found out dou SR by dou A0, we equated dou SR by dou A0 and dou SR by dou A1 to be 0, we equated it to 0. So, we got the normal equations and the normal equations were linear. We had two, con two unknown coefficients A0 and A1 and two linear equations. So, we were able to find them out. The same concept we applied in uh, multiple linear regression and polynomial regression. We frame the objective function which is nothing but minimization of sum of square of error and then we applied the condition for stationary, uh, uh, we applied the, we determined the stationary points and that led us to uh, the number of, uh, that led us to the normal equations, right. So, in all the three cases, uh, whether it is with constant coefficient or without constant coefficient. Uh, we ended up with set of simultaneous linear equations, right. So, that was the whole concept, right. Uh, we kept applying it multiple times uh, to make sure you get the concept. All these three cases, linear, simple linear regression, multiple linear regression and polynomial regression can be fit into something called as uh, general linear, reg, uh, general least square regression. So, now we will look into that, right. So, for example, all those three models are a subset of this particular model y is equal to uh, a0 z0 plus a1 z1 plus a2 z2 all the way up to am zm plus e, right. So, this part constitutes the model, right. So, the value predicted by the model plus error would be the measured value. So, if this were to, for this to fit into linear, uh, simple linear regression, this z0 is 1, z1 is x1, right. So, this uh, z2 onwards z2 to zm is 0. So, in that case this reduces to uh, simple linear regression, right. For multiple linear regression z0 is again 1 because we have this, we want this constant coefficient, z1 is x1, z2 is x2 and similarly zm is xm, right. So, this is what we solved. So, if we, if we can solve this one, if we have a generic expression for this one, that would be valid for this one also, right. So, under the condition z0 is 1, z1 is x1, z2 is x2 and zm is xm all the way up to zm is equal to xm. And similarly, polynomial regression can also be represented by this one with z0 equal to 1, z1 is equal to x, right and then we require x square over here. So, z2 is equal to x square all the way up to zm is equal to xm. So, this is the model which we worked with right. This was the model part and this was the error, right and this is the observed value. So, all these three cases which we saw is actually a subset of this general linear uh, least square. Uh, so, even it can capture, uh, even we can uh, fit models like this, right, y is equal to a0 plus a1 sin omega t plus a2 cos omega t plus error. Again, this is the model part this is the error part, this is the observed value, 
right. So, here for this model to be represented by this uh, z0 has to be 1, right, because here we do not have any coefficient, so it has to be 1, z1 is sin omega t, right, and z2 is cos omega t, right. If we take z2 as cos omega t, this model, this general model boils down to this, this model. So, what I am trying to tell you is that all these four all these three cases which we uh, which we independently discussed right or uh, cases like this can be solved if we are able to solve this one right so this is the uh, once we are able to solve this one the all the cases can be deduced from that so let us see uh, so okay so, this is that general model which we discussed in the previous slide, right. So, if n data points are given and if there are m variables, right, let us say uh, we will have, let, let us say for this the data point is going to be y1, y2 all the way up to yn and then we are going to have here if you see z0, z1, z2 all the way up to zm are the m plus m independent variables, right. So, here we will have z0, so this is, so this is going to be z0 1, z0 2 all the way up to z0 n, then we are going to have z1, right. So, this is z1 1, this is z1 2 all the way up to z1 n and then let us say z2, so z2 is the variable the first point of the z2 variable, the second point of the z2 variable and the nth point of the z2 variable. Similarly, we can extend it to m variables. So, this is given, either this is given or this can be obtained from whatever data is given, right. So, these are our equation, these are our data points, right. So, if we are to apply this model to each of this point. So, these are the uh, n equations which we are actually specifying. So, y1 is equal to a0 z0 1 plus a1 z1 1 plus a2 z2 1 all the way up to a m z m 1, right. So, this is again the model part and there may be some error associated with uh, the model for specially for the first point. So, that we indicate uh, e1, right. And for the second point, if we apply the model, right this is the value obtained from the model so that is and the error need not be the same as the error for point 1 so remember the first slide uh, wherein the error uh, associated with each point was different right so this that's why this error is being separately written for each of the endpoints right so these are the observed values this is what is uh, we are getting from the model for each of the value by substituting the point right so z2 is the variable when we say z21 that means we have substituted at the first point when we say z2n that means we have sub substituted the nth point in the model right so this is the model part and this is the error vector right so these n equations can be written in this matrix form b is equal to ax plus e right so a from this one if you see it is nothing but this coefficient matrix right which is nothing but this data points so that is what is a right and this y vector is nothing but the observed points right these are the unknown coefficients m plus 1 coefficients because we are starting with a0 plus we have this error vector right. So, this can be compactly written as the vector y, the z matrix, the vector a plus the error vector right. So, this a is lowercase a. So, th this set of equations can be represented by this, right. So, this is what is our, uh, this is what is our regression, uh, this is what is our uh, problem, right. So, now our job is to find out this A from this, right, and we do not know the error. So, this is a analytical solution, right, this can be solved and the solution to this is Z transpose Z into A is equal to Z transpose Y. So, if you are interested in how did this derivation happen, how did we get this analytical expression, uh, you can look into this book by Matthews and uh, Finks, right. Uh, this derivation is given there. So, for this problem, uh, instead of finding out all the derivatives and stuff, if we solve this set of equations, so this if you see it is linear equations in which Z is known, right, this is the Z, Z is known, so Z transpose Z is also known. 
a is what we are trying to find out right and y is known so this is y and z is again known so z transpose y can be calculated right and z transpose z can be calculated right so we directly get this as a this as b x right so if we use this analytical expression we don't need to uh, find out the summation of e if you remember we solved lot of calculations to actually find the uh, um, coefficient matrix and the right hand side vector so all that can be avoided right if we make use of this analytical expression right uh, in view of the nature of this course we are not showing you the derivation uh, but you can have it have a look at the uh, derivation now that we have uh, looked into general linear least squares right uh, we'll let us use the concept which we learnt uh, just now general linear least square to solve the multiple linear uh, regression problem which we have solved earlier right so this is the problem which we have solved earlier right so x1 uh, is an independent variable x2 is an independent variable we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 data points right uh, and this is the model which we were uh, which we had to fit y is equal to a0 plus a1 x1 plus a2 x2 right so for that uh, if you go back and look at all the derivation and the matrix which we obtained this was the coefficient matrix this is the right hand side vector when we substitute these values right so all that we have done previously so we are not uh, repeating it over here right so but if you calculate all of this you will get this coefficient matrix and this right hand side vector which can be solved to obtain this coefficient uh, these coefficients right so that is what we have done uh, previously right so now that we know general linear least square for general linear least square this is our model right so in the previous uh, few slides we have seen this is the model and the solution to this is this z transpose z into a is equal to z transpose y where z matrix is given by why this y vector is nothing but the uh, dependent variable right so that is that is something that we are always going to get from the uh, data points right over here the z matrix is z0 so the variable z0 the first point right so this is this entire column is the variable z0 and the end points this entire column is the variable z1 and the end points similarly this zm is the mth variable all the endpoints so that has to be st if we stack that in this form that will be our z uh, matrix so once we have this z matrix we can just we can merely compute z transpose z that will be our coefficient matrix uh, this coefficient matrix will be equal to uh, whatever we obtain over here right and the right hand side vector uh, also same if we do z transpose y y is a vector column vector which is known to us and z is this matrix so if we do z transpose y we will get a column vector that column vector will be the same as this right hand side b vector so uh, rather than computing this all this terms so for example rather than computing this uh, we will be using directly using this uh, analytical solution to solve uh, the problem which you are currently seeing right. so the current model that we have is so this is our data point right so whenever we have data point we write the model and then we write the uh, error term right but if you are merely writing the model then we don't include the error term right so right now it is the data point which is observed uh, equal to model plus some error that might be there right so for this to be equal to this expression the current problem to be equal to this we need to take z0 as 1 z1 as x1 and z2 as x2 right so if we take that uh, our current problem is a general linear least square model then our z matrix is a column of ones right and the x1 variable stacked all the date all the endpoints stacked as the second column the second variable stacked uh, the second variable all the endpoints stacked as the third column right so that would that, that that will be our z matrix so here if we apply the same thing to our current problem so z matrix in this case is a column of 1 because we have this constant coefficient had we not had this constant coefficient we do not need to include this column of 1 right and then we need, just need to stack these two columns x1 and x2 right so the way we have stacked is the constant the first variable and the second variable right so the solution which we will get will also be of the same form that the first value that we get will be a0 the second value will be a1 and then we will get the final coefficient a2 
So, if this is z, obviously this will be z transpose. So, if you multiply z transpose z, we will get a 3 cross 3 matrix and that 3 cross 3 matrix will be exactly similar to what we, we have got here, right. So, these two matrix are similar. So, without computing all these terms over here, right, we can directly get by doing z transpose z, right. Similarly, the right hand side vector, uh, instead of computing this, right, we can merely do z transpose y, right. So, y is the set of uh, values which we have got for the uh, dependent variable. So, if we do z transpose y, again we will get a 3 rows, 1 column, a column vector and this value will be similar to what we have over here. So, since the coefficient matrix A and the right hand side vector uh, B are identical, our solution X will also be identical, right. So, instead of employing this approach, right, we can directly employ this approach uh, to solve a linear least square problem. Again, it is one and the same thing, uh, it is just that uh, this might uh, be a little bit more convenient. Right? So, once we do that, we can calculate the R square, right, once model is known, uh, then it is the same thing y minus y mean the whole square, y minus y model the whole square and then sum it up, right, and then plug it into this expression that will give us the R square value. So, now let us look into a problem, right, which we have previously solved without constant coefficient. Remember, previously we had fit a model where there was constant coefficient and we also had fit a model where there was no constant coefficient, right. So, with constant coefficient, we have seen how we can apply general linear least squares, right. So, without constant coefficient, it is going to be similar, right. For the sake of completeness, uh, we will just show you the calculation. This is the problem which we had previously, right. So, x1, x2, y. This time we do, we have a model wherein there is no constant coefficient, there is no a naught, right, there is no constant coefficient, right. So, in this case our model was y is equal to a1 x1 plus a2 x2, right. Our task was to find out a1 and a2, the values of a and a2 such that this model best fits this data point, right. So, if you do do sr by uh, do a1, do sr by do a2, and equate to them to 0, you will get 2 linear equations in 2 unknowns a1 and a2 and if you write them in the conventional ax equal to b form, uh, this is what we will be getting. So, the matrix which we got is this one, this is the a matrix, this is the right hand side uh, vector, right and this was the solution, right. So, now let us do the same problem using the general linear least square, square model. So, again as we discussed in the previous slide, this is our model, this is the analytical solution of that model and uh, in this analytical solution, the z matrix is the z0 variable, the z1 z variable all the way up to zm variable stacked one after the other and all the endpoints. So, that is our z matrix. So, in this case our model is a0 x1 plus a1 x2, you can even say it is a1 x1 plus a2 x2, it is just the notations that are different. This is our model, this is the data point and so this is the error term has to be uh, over here. Right. So, for this problem to be equivalent to this problem, z0 has to be x1, right, because there is no constant coefficient term, right. If constant coefficient term had been there, then z0 is equal to 1, here there is no constant coefficient and z1 is nothing but the second variable x2, right. So, in this case, this is going to be our uh, z matrix, right. So, for the current problem, uh, the x1 column, all the end, uh, all the six points have to be stacked over here. Similarly, the x2 variable has to be stacked over here. So, we get a uh, 6 by 2 matrix, right. So, this is the z transpose. So, once we do z transpose z, we will get a 2 cross 2 matrix, right. And again, we can calculate z transpose y. So, if we calculate z transpose y, we will get this right hand side vector, right. So, now if you see this is exactly identical, this a and b is identical to what we would we obtained over here, right. So, solution would be the same a0 is equal to 1.11 plus a1 is equal to 4.23, right. So, a1 is equal to 4.23. So, that completes uh, multilinear regression with constant coefficient and multilinear regression without constant coefficient. Um, without constant coefficient in terms of general linear least squares. Without general linear least squares also we have seen how to get that. Now, we have seen 
if we know the analytical solution for general linear least squares, we can directly employ that for multiple linear regression problem, right. And similarly, uh, th this can be extended for polynomial regression also, because polynomial regression at the end of the day, we are converting into a multiple linear regression problem, right. So, whatever we have discussed for uh, multiple linear regression with the analytical solution of general linear least square is also valid for polynomial regression. So, again uh, this is just for the sake of completion, uh, you can calculate the r square value, right. So, model is known, uh, you can calculate how the model, uh, had we taken the mean as the model, what would be the error and now that we have a model, uh, what is the error, right. So, the difference uh, st minus sr shows the improvement, st minus sr by st is the uh, coefficient of determination, right. So, that is 0 0.94 uh, in this case. That concludes the linear uh, regression part, right. Um, so, now we look into nonlinear regressions. So, linear regressions, it boils down to uh, set solving a set of simultaneous linear equations. Uh, either we can uh, do it as we did in the first part of this session or we can use the analytical expression z transpose z uh, into a is equal to z transpose y. Mm -hmm.